over there I've got the squat rack set up here I've got my leg press set up um, of course I've got the actual plate for the leg press next to it because I'm putting grip tape on it still but once that moves out of the way there's a little space to walk and load plates and then I've got my leg developer my leg extension and leg curl machine with dedicated plates just for that but I've still got this space right here and I know with, with where the camera's at you can't see all the way over there but um, starting about right here and looking this way there's probably oh, about 10 feet of space from me to the to the end of the padded floor where I can put more equipment and my idea is to put that equipment against this wall facing out but the other thing I need to build is an actual cable machine and I keep going back and forth on what I want to build and I think the conclusion I've come to is that I'm going to have one cable machine that is specifically just for lat pull downs, uh, tricep extensions, rows, things like that. Basically, it will not be adjustable as far as where the handles are. Either you put the handle up top so you can do pull downs or extensions, or you can put the handle down low so you can do curls or rows or whatever else, and that'll be it. Um, that leaves me with a machine that requires the bare minimum amount of material. I can build it the fastest, it'll be the most compact, take up the, le the least amount of floor space. And then later, uh, when I'm ready, I can then build an actual dedicated uh, cable crossover machine that has the adjustable handles where I can kind of put them anywhere I want. I can use it for rear rotators, cable crossovers, whatever else. But that's going to be a bigger machine that requires more space. I'll have to arrange the gym a little bit. It's going to require more material and more time, so I'm going to save that for later. Now to show you what I'm doing here, basically. Uh, this is going to be the, the cable machine. It's just the same 2x2 two two square tubing I'm using for everything else. And because I am using a, a free weight plate loaded design for this machine, that actually gives a lot of advantages. One of the advantages is the fact that I can put as much weight as I want in any kind of increments that I want. And I don't have to rely on what's already on the stack, uh, either on the low end or the high end. The other advantage is the fact that one of the inherent problems with weight stacks that are already on the machine is the fact that they take up a lot of physical space. If you think about the actual the tubing, the actual track that the weight slides along, even if you have a track that's six foot long, so it could theoretically give you six feet worth of travel, which should be able to suit you for anything you want to do, if the weight stack itself is two and a half feet tall, because you've got a nice heavy weight stack, well, it's two and a half feet tall. So that means all of a sudden, your six foot track only has about three and a half feet worth of travel. It makes you incredibly limited. So what ends up happening with a lot of these pieces of equipment that have weight stacks is either they have to decide, okay, we want to maintain a real heavy weight stack that's two and a half or even three feet high, depending on how much weight's on there. But that means now we have to make the track extra long. It's a, it's a seven or eight foot long track, a really big machine that uses a lot of material, takes up a lot of space or we're going to try to keep it under seven feet tall you know maybe around seven feet because that's a little more reasonable it's big but it'll fit in most homes for like home gym stuff um, but that means we have to keep the weight stack short so there's less weight on it and you can't use it for as many things well when you use a plate loaded design the actual area that loads the plates is pretty low profile it only needs to be a little bit bigger than the actual bar itself that's holding the plates so if you have a six foot track, for example, and your mechanism that holds the plates is only four inches tall because all the plates load out sideways, that means you still have five foot eight inches worth of travel. So using a plate loaded design allows you to keep the machine smaller and more compact while actually maintaining a much larger range of motion without having to do anything fancy with cable setups or anything else. So. I was actually initially, because I remembered my old weight stack machine, I was gonna make this cable machine like eight feet tall. But I actually changed my mind and decided to make it only two meters tall. And that's about six and a half feet, around six and a half feet, uh, if you're unfamiliar with the meters to feet. But it's nice and tall enough that it looks like a series machine and it allows me to reach up and get a good stretch if I need to and everything else. But I have an insane amount of of actual usable track space. I can I could probably take that thing from the top, pull it all the way down and touch my feet, and I'd still have space to go. So simple two by two square tubing, two meters long, very basic. For the top, because I'm gonna anchor this into the wall, 
the top is similar to this. I'll actually show you here. I have this one I welded up yesterday. This is going to go, if you think about the, the actual two by two square tubing being vertical, this is gonna be welded to the back of it. Then this side is gonna be anchored into the wall. Well, here on the bottom, I've got these holes that go straight through and that's where the screw goes all the way through to hold the top of the actual uh, track that the weight's gonna be on. And in the bottom, again, this goes up against the, the vertical tubing, this goes against the wall, and facing up, I have these one inch holes cut where the tubes sit down inside. So I sit the tubes inside there and they can't move around or come out because they're set securely in the holes. And then I run the screw through the top to anchor them in place so they can't wobble around or pop out or anything else. It's a very simple but a very secure design. And again, everything's done with the same two by two square tubing. Not a lot of material, not a lot of space, very compact, very rigid, very reliable, and gives me a lot of actual usable track space. Uh, and then these one inch outside diameter chrome tubes are what I'm gonna use for the actual tracks. And as you can see, I've got this little rubber stop and uh, this screw going straight to the top, or this, this bolt going straight through the top that's gonna run through the, uh, it's gonna run through this, just like that. Or the bottom of it is gonna sit in here, just like that. Now I've gotta clean up this edge and clean up this so it fits nice and snug. Right now, if I just touch it, it doesn't quite wanna go in, I'd have to work it. I want it to be a nice tight fit. I don't want these rattling around. All right, so I've got the, the bottom welded on here. And the reason why it's actually not all the way down and it's up off the ground is because I want enough space that even when it's all the way down in the racked bottom position, I can put a full size Olympic plate on there and it won't interfere with the ground. It has to be up off the ground. So this is elevated to the right height that it needs to be to uh, keep the plates off the ground and this is where the, the backing plate will go that anchors it to the wall. I go over to this side, same sort of thing. This is the top, the backing plate will go here. Now all I've done is nothing fancy. As you saw a minute ago, um, when I put the, my, my chromed tubes on here, it wouldn't go, it, it kind of stopped, just quite wasn't big enough. So I was very simple. I took this, just a, a simple round file, because it's a file, it's nice and hard and it, it, it does a real easy job of filing down mild steel even without much effort. And all I did was I just put it inside and I went right around the whole perimeter of the hole. Not a lot, I spent maybe literally 30 seconds just real quick all the way around the perimeter. And now I have to test fit everything. So I've got my, my tube here I'll start with this back one first. Touch it up, give it a little bit of a wiggle, and it pops right in. Do this front one, a little wiggle, and it snugs right in. So both of my tubes are now fitting. Now I've got my, my bolts with my washers. I'll run up here. Make sure everything lines up correctly. And there's my rail system. Now obviously I haven't cranked it down, I haven't tightened it, nothing's been really secured in place, but it's just kind of sitting where it needs to so I can make sure everything's lined up correctly. This is a very important part of the, the building process. As much as you'll start to get on a roll and you feel like you're in a good groove and you just want to keep going, 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 you have to remind yourself to stop before too much is done and just test things. Now, I'll stand this up. And there we go. That's basically how it's gonna look. Um, like I said, this is two meters high, so it's a bit taller than me. And it's got the, the rails here. The weight will slide up and down. It's gonna be plate loaded at the bottom. And this is the front of the machine. I'll have, initially the idea was to have a pulley up top and a pulley down low and that was it. But the fact that I have this nice, long, clean post makes me consider 
having an adjustable pulley system. However, this is one of those parts where you should need to make up your mind ahead of time because making an adjustable pulley system would mean that I have to drill holes on both sides of this tube and build a slider around it, all of which would be infinitely faster and easier and more accurate if I would have done it when it was just a plain tube and it wasn't welded and attached to all this stuff. Trying to put this big contraption on the drill press um, is, is a nightmare. It's an accident and it's a problem waiting to happen. So I'll probably just stick to the high and low pulley, but maybe in the future if I've got some free time and I wanna modify it, I'll unbolt it from the wall. I'll, uh, I'll set it up in the drill press with some, some exterior supports to make sure nothing twists out of the way and I'll make an adjustable system. I don't know, we'll see, but. I've got the, the frame kind of in place where it's gonna be. I just don't have it actually anchored to the wall yet. It's just set up so I can see about how it fits and what I'll have to do to mount it properly. Um, I'm right now making the rail. So basically, I'll flip it around and show you here. So simple one inch solid bar again so it's ultimate versatility as far as what i can put on there to add is weight um olympic plates standard plates anything i want really on both sides and those are going straight into quarter inch plate this quarter inch plate actually had the hole cut in it and i slid the bar in and i'm welding it around the seam i'm going to do several passes to get a nice wide grip so that it actually grabs as much of the bar and as much of the surface of that quarter inch plate as possible just to make it as rigid as possible and this quarter inch plate is welded around the uh, the outside of this two inch uh, square tube now with this two inch square tube i have 32 millimeter holes um, cut out on the top and on the bottom this is 26 millimeter. 26 millimeter means it's one millimeter bigger than the actual rails it's sliding over. So if it shifts, it'll it'll touch the rails, but if it's, when it's operating properly, it'll never grab or drag under any circumstances. Even as you know things heat up or cool down and expand, it won't be enough to actually grab the bottom, but it'll act as a kind of buffer in case something torques. It can't go too out of whack. And through these 32 millimeter holes, I have these plastic sleeves. This is a 32 millimeter right here, 35 millimeter up here. And basically this will plug in straight to the top. And it's, as you can see, it's a tight fit. I have to actually take a rubber mallet and hammer it into place and that keeps it from lifting back out. That will be one on either side, which will uh, allow a nice smooth slippery interior to go up and down those chrome rails and then I will be taking one of these tabs and well, I'll probably actually put it this way right in the middle so I can uh, loop the, the cable through to actually lift it up and down the slide all right I got the uh, the pulley machine done or the cable machine now I haven't actually put weight on it yet. It'll probably take a couple days after weight's been on it to stretch the cables. All the cables stretch a little bit. And then once the cables have been stretched, I can readjust them and retighten them. I went ahead and sprayed it with a quick coat of spray paint. So you might see that glossening. Uh, that's just to keep it from oxidizing until I can put a good layer of paint on it. But uh, it's pretty simple. It's got the one inch solid rod down there. I can fit Olympic plates, standard plates, anything else. Uh, it's got the guide rails here the one support post that's anchored into the wall. And then I used a single point connection with a cable on the actual weight system. And then two separate cables that join with a double pulley right here. What this does is it means that if I put, let's say 100 kgs on the actual weight stack, um, it doesn't get divided by a compound pulley system. If I pull on this top cable, it's the one single cable just layering through. There's no compound pulley action happening. So it actually gives me all 100 kgs. And it's the same thing down low. Um, down low, if I pull up, it's just, it's pulling down this entire contraption. And what that does is typically, um, having it connected right here, if it was pulling from a single point with these two, then it would be cutting my load in half. But because it has to pull through there and there. Basically, it's a double meeting a double. It cancels each other. It cancels each other out, and it still gives me the straight 100 kgs of resistance. So, I have 
a very low profile weight attachment area that leaves as much room as possible on the actual weight track, which gives me as much travel as possible. Uh, it's very compact. As you can see, it just takes up this one little space next to the machine. I have lots of floor space all around it. I have the high cable. I have the low cable. Every, every ounce of weight that I put on there is actually transferred to the cable. So there's nothing lost through uh, any sort of means of accidental mechanical advantage. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. It's as simple as that. Once the paint dries and I get the cables adjusted, I'll be able to uh, start using it for workouts maybe here in the next couple days.